Slice of Sea is a peaceful adventure and puzzle platformer game by the developer Matthias Skutnik. You play as a sea creature and explore a desolated world of dust, collect items, solve puzzles and lead seaweed back home to the sea. This visually captivating 2D game was completely made in Game Maker and in this video we will analyze the art style and see what we can learn from it. So let's dive deep into this world full of amazing art. Watercolor and ink scenes with a blend of realism and fantasy make Skutnik's significant comic book signature since he published multiple comic books using this exact drawing style. He combined his comic book art with digital adjustments such as adding textures and watercolor wallpapers. Every piece such as foreground, middle ground and background was separately drawn on paper, scanned and transferred into digital software. You have a feeling like you're walking through someone's sketchbook and I think this adds more character to the whole game and the art style. So what can we learn about art based on this game? Combining traditional mediums and digital software, you can create stunning hand-drawn games. You can start by using a simple ink pen and paper like the author of this game, scan and edit it later in the software or use digital software right away since we can recreate traditional art style in a digital space. I suggest using Krita in this case because Krita offers amazing free default brushes where we can draw and paint in this style. You can recreate the look of an ink pen and watercolor style or you can add watercolor effect later by using different adjustment modes. Next one is hatching. This is a method of line drawing that describes light and shadows and the shadow is created by a density of lines. This technique can create interesting textures and it's not hard to learn. We know that art and the atmosphere in the game can evoke certain feelings. There are a lot of key points in the art that help artists create the feelings in their artworks, but you can also rely on your own eyes and conclude how something makes you feel. It's important to mention that art is not the only thing that contributes to an atmosphere in the games, but it takes a big part to it. The atmosphere in this game creates a calming, peaceful, mysterious and nostalgic mood, but also abandoned and a little bit creeped out feel. It sparks curiosity to discover new items and different places. But how is this atmosphere actually created in this game? Well, it all depends on a certain visual element, so let's analyze them. Looking at these scenes, the lighting is very soft, subtle, in some parts very light. On the other hand, we can find very dark scenes, mostly when the character is inside of a building. In terms of values, we have a full range of values happening throughout this game and we can all agree that the most used is the mid value range, which means that the scenes have enough of light, creating a more peaceful and calm environment. Parts of this game that are more dark are mostly used inside of a building where it's used a low key range of value, which means dark and we can connect it with that mysterious and abandoned feel. When we look at the protagonist, its size can tell us how big the world is. Compared to the environment props and other characters, we can tell that he's moving through the big world trying to discover and explore places. Character size can also provide us with clues about the game. For example, with smaller characters, the world may feel more detailed and this puts a focus on world exploration and the discovery of unique places. Players may also feel alone and abandoned in this big world, especially if we look at the asymmetrical and irregular textures and environmental elements. That contributes to the abandoned and creeped out feel in this game. When we look at the backgrounds, they are almost as detailed as the foreground and middle ground parts. The game invests heavily in world building, often with a rich history and lore for the in-game world. Shape language is very strong throughout this game, we can find a lot of triangle shapes from scene to scene, which indicates danger and uncertainty, but it also gives a sense of action. Passing areas and areas with puzzle solving tend to have more rectangle and rounded objects which represent a calm, well-structured and balanced environment. And finally, colors. If we take these screenshots from different areas in the game, we can see that the most used color is this desaturated green, which mostly represents the color of the sky and most buildings. When we look at the other elements and scenes, we can find repeated usage of desaturated blue combined with purple. So I would say that these three colors are the main colors in this game and they create the analogous color contrast, which means that these colors sit next to each other on the color wheel. And speaking of contrast, we can also find other colors in this game. Let's take a look at those screenshots again. We can see a lot of yellows, red and orange colors and they together create a subtle complementary contrast. And when we look at our color wheel again, we can see that these colors are sitting on the opposite sides of the main colors. They are not highly saturated at all and each color tone sits on the left side of the hue cube, which means a low level of saturation. 
Through some areas, we can spot some places or objects with a high level of saturation, like very bright blue or red, and this is mostly used for a game purpose to indicate there is something on that place or that player can interact with the object. When speaking of colors, the most important thing is to stay consistent with the color palette. This way, you keep the atmosphere coherent throughout the game. Slice of Sea perfectly shows an example of that. With a simple contrast and desaturated colors, the mood stays the same until the end of the game. Use color theory and have it as a guide. Deciding whether you want to have more saturated or desaturated colors can completely define the look of your game. And of course, everything takes time to learn, but you can have these tips as your short guide to achieving your art goals. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.